Lord Jesus, you are the living light who transformed darkness into light through the blessings of this glorious Sunday. Make us worthy to praise you with all those who saw the radiant light of your resurrection. We worship and thank you, your Father, in your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with the church and her children. Incense, just a little. Just, just do the. Just, just do the uh, no, just, just this one. Let us raise glory, honor, and praise to the living one, who by his death gave life to his creation. By his resurrection, he saved his church, gave joy to his flock, brought us back to his father, and enriched us with the gifts of his spirit. To the good one be glory and honor on this blessed Sunday in all the days of our lives and forever. Amen. Only begotten Son, you were born of the Father before all ages, and by your creative will you separated light from darkness on this, the first day of the week. You fashioned all creation to honor Adam, the image of your majesty. We praise and thank you and celebrate proclaiming, blessed are you for you appeared in the flesh on earth like us and you lived among us. Blessed are you for you were buried and counted among the dead and you shined your light in the sadness of the tomb. Blessed are you for you rose to life giving good hope to all, and you filled the angels with the radiance, and they appeared at your tomb like flashes of lightning. Now, O Christ, we ask you with the fragrance of this incense to make us worthy to rejoice in the glory of your radiant resurrection, breathe life into our departed, and make them worthy to stand at your right hand in your eternal light that you have prepared for those who love you. With them praise and thank you for your graces and glorify you, your Father, and your Holy Spirit. Amen.
O oh God, accept the fragrance of our incense and our prayers, and may we become a sweet fragrance through our good works and actions, hear our petitions, and grant rest to our departed in your dwelling place of joy. O oh Lord, our God, to you be glory forever. Amen. Shout with joy from the mountains. Sunday is a feast so great. Offer praise to the Lord God and with angels celebrate. Let's be God who exalted Sunday far above all things. Let the priest read the gospel. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Corinthians. Father, for your blessing. Stephen, an ounce of word of God to this community and to all the world around us. Brothers and sisters, when I came to you proclaiming the mystery of God, I did not come with sublimity of words or of wisdom, for I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I came to you in weakness and fear and much trembling, and my message and my proclamation were not with persuasive words of wisdom, but with a demonstration of spirit and power, so that your faith might rest not on human wisdom, but on the power of God. Yet we do speak a wisdom to those who are mature, but not a wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age who are passing away. Rather, we speak of God's wisdom, mysterious, hidden, which God predetermined before the ages of our glory, and which none of the rulers of this age knew. For if they had known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But, as it is written, what the eye has not seen and the ear has not heard and what has not entered the human heart, what God has prepared for those who love him. This God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit scrutinizes everything, even the depths of God. Praise be to God always.
from the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John, who proclaimed life to the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. The Lord Jesus says, whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me. And whoever loves me will be loved by my Father. And I will love him and reveal myself to him. Judas, not the Iscariot, said to him, Master, then, what, what happened that you will reveal yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered and said to him, whoever loves me will keep my word. My father will love him and we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. Yet the word you hear is not mine, but that of the Father who sent me. I have told you this while I am with you. The Advocate, the Holy Spirit, that the Father will send in my name, he will teach you everything and remind you of all that I told you. Peace, I live with you. My peace, I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. This is the truth. Peace be with you. Praise and blessings to Jesus Christ, our Lord and God, for giving us his words of life. We started uh, the liturgy today with the word Alleluia, which we can translate Hallelujah to, it depends what language you're from or you're speaking. The word, of course, means praise be to God, no matter what happens. Pandemics, earthquakes, diseases, death, everything that can really shake the world <laughs> and people complain and most of them say, well, it's not the way we planned it. But yet the Holy Spirit tells us, yes, despite all these things, you can still sing Alleluia, praise be to God. And so St. Paul, of course, uh, was not trusted too much by the early apostles. But then somehow the Holy Spirit kind of moved him around and he says, I've got to go tell other people, especially in the big cities. Ooh, the big cities of his day was Corinth. The first reading today is a letter to the Corinthians. Big, powerful city. Ooh, a Greek city, but was conquered by the Romans. A lot of people there, a lot of business. And uh, I'm sure there were Lebanese there doing business in those days, people of Phoenicia. And then of course, Rome, another big city. Uh, Alexandria, right at the tip of Egypt, near the Mediterranean where all the business was taking place. And so he felt he had to go to all these different places. And so, yes, in the Bible, we have the letter he wrote to the Romans, and we have the letter we read today, part of it, just the first one, not the second one, to the people of Corinth, because Corinth was a big city, terrible place. Business galore, 
all kinds of bad things happening there. There was all kinds of temples. One big temple, or several temples, of course. But one big one was the temple of Apollo. You may have heard it's a Greek god because it was an old Greek city before it was destroyed by the Romans. And Apollo was a god of the sun, medicine, maybe even magic, I don't know, prophecy and music. But it's not the only temple there was there, many other temples and so Paul, but then there was a little group of Jewish people in their synagogues, insignificant people. They're good at business, of course, but they, uh, they were not very influential. And so he goes there to preach the Holy Spirit. He says, not with wisdom, because I'm not the most genius of all apostles. In fact, they don't even trust me because I was against Jesus in the beginning. And so, but he goes there. Then he's helped out by others, by Barnabas. And other people helped him and he went off to different places. And so we have in the Bible all the letters. And so he says in this letter today, it's not by the wisdom of the Greeks or the power of the Romans who can conquer the whole world all the way. No, Romans conquered all the way up to the tip of England, all around the Mediterranean, North Africa. In fact, Africa was their breadbasket bring bread, wheat, food from Africa to the capital city of Rome. St. Paul went many places. He was a missionary, and so the Holy Spirit is given to us, as we read in St. John today, uh, the Holy Spirit is given for mission so that we, we can recognize Jesus as the Lord and Savior. Very important because he is starting a new kingdom, not the kingdom of the, of the Huns, of the Romans, of the Greeks, or all these other kingdoms around the world, communist kingdoms or whatever they are. And so it is a kingdom of Jesus where we keep the commandments. We know sometimes we forget, so we ask for pardon. The Holy Spirit helps us as the Holy Spirit helped St. Paul and all the other people who helped him to go to all these different, he was always on the mission. And finally, he ends up in that big, big city of Rome. But in those days, of course, Rome was beginning to disintegrate because they were not listening to the word of God. They were so powerful to keep their empire going taking all the food out of Af North Africa. And so the Holy Spirit is given to us so that we can remember, yes, Jesus is the Lord. He's a savior. His passion, his suffering, his death, and his resurrection, new life given to him, sitting at the right hand of the Father, as we say in the credo, in the I believe in God. And so on Sundays we celebrate. We celebrate the Eucharist. We say, thank you, Lord. We can sing hallelujah because you have chosen us here in this town, in this little place somewhere. It's not as powerful as Corinth or the big cities of Alexandria and other big cities on the Mediterranean. No, no, no. It is here that we say, thank you, Lord, because of your death your suffering, your resurrection, and you have asked us to be your apostles, as you asked Paul, to do something very special, to move on to different places, so that despite the pandemics and the wars and the killings and ooh, all kinds of genocide everywhere, even in these days, we can still sing Alleluia and we break bread. We say, thank you, Lord, you have chosen us. We are ready to do your work. Forgive us our sins, and so let us be able to, uh, to be like St. Paul, like all the other apostles of old, and say, thank you, Lord. Now, it also, when we break bread, 
the Eucharist, we say, thank you, you've chosen us. It also gives us hope that despite everything that happens around us in the world these days, especially if you work in the missions, of, uh, not only Africa, but everywhere else, in Myanmar and uh, China, where the communist system is so strong these days and really working against the work of the church. And so we still have a little bit of hope. And what is hope? Ooh, you say it's a virtue. Good, it is. But you know who? A, very, a great American poet, I never knew her, she's way before my time or our time, from Massachusetts actually, not too far away. Uh, her name is uh, Emily, you probably can say the word, Dickinson. She never was a missionary, she was never followed the steps of St. Paul or all these other apostles of missionaries, she never went to Africa. I don't even think she went to Boston, the big city in her neighborhood. But she wrote a little maxim about hope. And it's very true to us. And, and she says, as I finish, she say, hope, she says, is a thing with feathers that perches in the soul and sings a tune without any words and never stops at all. Hallelujah. of your goodness, I will enter your house and worship in your 
holy temple. Guide me, O Lord, in your fear, and instruct me in your justice. Pray for me to the Lord. May God accept your offering and have mercy on us through your prayer. accepted the offerings of our ancestors. Now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you out of their love for you and for your holy name. Shower your spiritual blessings upon them and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life in your kingdom. Amen. As we remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God and Saint Mary and Saint Joseph and all the great martyrs of old. Remember, O oh God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers, our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom this sacrifice is offered, Mr. Robert Doran. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering. Amen. We continue with the anaphora of the Twelve Apostles on page 754, 754. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Merciful and holy Lord and Father, for your only begotten Son, you have prepared this spiritual banquet for us. Accept the offering of this bloodless sacrifice and grant us the gift of your Holy Spirit. Make us worthy to give one another the greeting of peace with pure hearts and divine love, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace to you, O holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. Let each one of us give a greeting of peace to his neighbor with love, and faith which is pleasing to the Lord. Amen. 
and security and your true love and divine mercy be with us and among us all the days of our lives that we may raise glory and thanks to you now and forever. Amen. O Lord, we now bow before you and ask you to look upon us with mercy. Make us worthy to approach your holy altar with pure hearts and holy souls and bodies, that we may raise glory and thanks to you now and forever. Amen. The love of God the Father, the grace of the Holy Begotten Son, only begotten Son, and the communion and dwelling with the Holy Spirit be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit. Let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship Him with humility. It is right and just. Truly it is right and just to glorify and praise you, O God the Father. For you are holy and the giver of life. You are blessed with the only begotten Son, and the living Holy Spirit. You are surrounded by the cherubim and seraphim who sing with pure voices and heavenly melodies. They cry out, glorify, and proclaim. Holy is the only Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and holy is your life-giving Spirit. You are holy and the giver of all that is good for our salvation. Your only begotten Son became flesh of the pure Virgin Mary, and by His divine plan, He saved and redeemed us. And on the day before his life-giving passion, he took bread, his holy hand, he blessed. Sanctified, and broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which is broken, given for you, for many, for the forgiveness of sins and for eternal life. Amen. In a similar way, over the chalice of wine mixed with water, he blessed and sanctified it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is my blood of the new covenant which will be poured out and given for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins 
and for eternal life. Amen. Whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do so in memory of me until I come again. We remember your death, O Lord. We profess your resurrection. We await your second coming. We implore your mercy and compassion. We ask for the forgiveness of sins. May your mercy rest upon us. O Lord, lover of all people, we remember your plan of salvation, and we ask you to have mercy on your worshipers and to save your inheritance when you appear at the end of time to reward all people justly according to their deeds. For this, your church implores you and through you and with you implores your Father, saying, have mercy on us, Almighty Father. Have mercy on us. O Lord, as we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them and because of them. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we our faith in you, and we ask you. Have compassion on us, O God. Have mercy on us and hear us. How awesome is this moment, O oh my beloved, for the living Holy Spirit descends and rests upon this offering for our sanctification. Let us stand with reverence as we pray. Have mercy on us, O Lord, have mercy on us. Send us your life-giving Spirit from heaven to hover over this offering and make it the life-giving body and blood and to pardon and sanctify. Hear us, O Lord. Hear us, O Lord. Hear us, O Lord. And may your living Holy Spirit come and rest upon us and upon this offering. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. That by his descent he may make this bread the body of Christ our God. Amen. And make the mixture in this chalice the blood of Christ our God. Amen. Amen. May these holy mysteries be for the forgiveness of sins, the healing of souls and bodies, and the strengthening of consciences, so that some of your faithful may, may so that none of your faithful may perish. Rather, make us worthy to live by your Spirit and lead a pure life, and to raise glory to you now and forever. Amen. We offer you, Lord, the divine sacrifice for your church, especially for our fathers and shepherds, uh, Gregory, uh, so many leaders of the church, uh, the Francis Pope of Rome, and uh, Peter, our patriarch of Antioch, our Bishop Gregory, and all the bishops of the true faith, with uh, blameless lives and with purity and holiness, may they guide your church and present to you a faithful people who honor your name. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Remember, O Lord, your people here before you, especially those who presented these offerings. Forgive them so that they may always live blameless lives in your presence and recognize the blessings that you bestow upon them. For you are good and rich in graces. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, civil leaders throughout the world, that they may stand for justice and establish peace. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, all those who have pleased you from the beginning, especially Mary, the Holy Mother of God, the prophets, apostles, martyrs, and confessors, John the Baptist, Stephen the Archdeacon, St. Joseph, St. Marin, St. Jude, and all the saints, assist us through their prayers and make us worthy to rejoice with them in your kingdom. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord have Remember, O Lord, the fathers and teachers of the true faith, who have endured sufferings for the sake of your church and your people. 
May we truly and faithfully follow in their footsteps. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Remember, O Lord, the faithful departed who have left us and have gone to their rest, hoping in you, waiting that life-giving voice, calling them to life. Accept the offerings we present to you on their behalf and have mercy on them in your kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, who is without sin, we hope to find mercy, forgiveness for our sins, and for theirs. Grant rest, O God, to the departed, and forgive the sins we have committed, with doubtful knowledge. Grant us pardon, O God, and forgive us and the departed, so that our blessed name may be glorified in us, and in all things, of the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. As it was, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. We have believed and have reproached, and now we seal and break this oblation, the heavenly bread, the body of the Word, who is the living God. We sign this chalice of salvation and thanksgiving with a forgiving ember which glows with heavenly mysteries. In the name of the Father, the living one, of the living and of the Holy only Son, the Holy One begotten of Him, and like him, the living one for the living and the Holy Spirit, the beginning, the end, and the perfection of all that was and will be in heaven and on earth, the one true and blessed God without division, from whom comes life forever. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ is sprinkled on his holy body in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, United, O Lord, the divinity with our humanity, our humanity with your divinity, your life with our mortality, and our mortality with your life. You have assumed what is ours, and you have yeah, given, given us, us what is yours, for the life and salvation of our souls. To you be glory forever. O Lord, you are the pleasing oblation who offered yourself for us. You are the forgiving sacrifice who offered yourself to your Father. You are the high priest who offered yourself as the Lamb. Through your mercy, may our prayer rise like incense, which we offer to your Father through you. To you be glory forever. Compassionate Lord, may we your lowly servants, be made worthy to pray with purity and holiness, and to call upon you, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Yes, O Lord, lover of all people, deliver us from the evil one and from his deceitful ways. And do not forsake us, lest temptation overcome us. For yours is the kingdom, with your only Son and your Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. And peace be with you and with your spirit. Let us bow our heads before the God of mercy, before his forgiving altar, and before the body and blood of our Savior, who gives life to those who partake of him, and receive the blessing from the Lord. O Lord, bless your faithful people who bow before you. Deliver us from all harm and make us worthy to share in these divine my mysteries with purity and holiness that through them we may be forgiven and made holy. And we raise glory to you now 
and forever. Amen. The grace of the most holy trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. Amen. Amen. Let each one of us look to God with reverence and humility and ask him for mercy and compassion. Holy gifts for the holy, with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One Holy Father, one Holy Son, one Holy Spirit, blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is one in heaven and on earth. To him be glory forever. Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy body and our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for new life. O Lord our God, to you be glory forever. I sing.
Again and again, we thank you, O Lord, and raise glory to you for giving us your body to eat and your living blood to drink. O lover of all people, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us, O Lord, O compassionate and merciful one. O lover of all people, have mercy on us. We thank you, Lord God and Father. We ask you that... Uh, this divine communion be for the forgiveness of sins, for the glory of your holy name, that your only Son and of your Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you and with your spirit. Lord Jesus, our God and Savior, you became flesh for our sake. By sacrificing yourself, you saved us. Deliver us from the damnation and make us temples of your holy name. For we are your people. In your inheritance we glorify and honor you, your Father, your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the most holy trinity accompany you the father and the son and the holy spirit the one god to whom be glory forever amen, amen.